Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to continue our series on comparing military rifles of the 20th century. The two guns we're going to talk about today are one, the G36 from Germany, and secondly, the Steyr AUG, or what we affectionately call the AUG. But these two rifles represent the most prolific of the mostly polymer constructed firearms that were used by large militaries during the 20th century. The Steyr AUG went into military service in Austria in 1977. The Austrians went all in with polymers, as a matter of fact, because they also adopted the Glock pistol, which would go on to be a worldwide phenomenon, especially right here in the United States. And then later, 1990, uh, what was it, 1997, I believe, the German military adopted the G36. And just like the AUG of 1977, it made extensive use of polymers. So today we're going to compare these two military rifles to each other. I'm going to share my thoughts at the end of the video as to which one I think makes for a better infantry rifle. Let's get started. In 1977, the Austrians adopted the Steyr AUG. They gave it the military designation of STG-77, which obviously corresponds to the year of adoption. To put that into perspective, the very first Star Wars movie played in theaters in 1977. So yes, this is an old design, and it's been in military service ever since then. Uh, now, it's gone through a number of different evolutionary changes. This is an example of what an early military Steyr AUG would have looked like with its 20-inch barrel, its open four-pronged muzzle device, green furniture, integral 1.5 power optic with the donut of death. But this rifle would go on to evolve and it wasn't just adopted by Aust Austria, but it was also adopted by Australia and some other militaries around the world and, and paramilitaries and police departments also adopted the rifle as well. But it continues on in military service to this very day. And to my knowledge, at least in the case of Austria and Australia, there's no intent currently to replace them in military service. As a matter of fact, the Australians have actually updated it yet again, and they're calling it the F-90. They were talking about importing it into the United States for civilian sales, but that got nixed uh, for political reasons. So unfortunately, we probably won't see them. But to this very day, Steyr USA does still bring in these rifles. They'll have Picatinny flat top receivers versus the integral optic. You can still get the integral optic, but it comes with a bunch of pick rails on it. It looks really kind of gaudy, in my opinion. This, this rifle looks very, very clean. But the AUG had some pretty interesting features for the time. Now first, it, use, it is a bullpup, obviously, in configuration. So you have your bolt and chamber right here by the shooter's face. Now this makes a number of people nervous for whatever reason, but these guns have been tested extensively and you're very unlikely to be damaged by the gun blowing up in your face. But people still worry about that. But not only that, this rifle was also developed with left-handed shooters in mind. Now another uh, military that uses bull pups is the British military. And their L85 is, um, is different in that it's based on the AR-18 action. And if you're a left-handed shooter, you just became a right-handed shooter because there's no facilities for that rifle to be comfortably or even realistically fired by a person that's left-handed because the ejection port is right in your face as well as the reciprocating charging handle. But the Steyr AUG in 1977 had the facilities for left-handed conversion. You would change the bolt out, take this port cover off, put it on the other side, and you could set the rifle up for left-handed operation. What did not change, though, was the location of the charging handle. It would stay on the left-hand side of the receiver, which represents something of an ergonomic challenge to the military uh, forces that would be using it in its left-handed configuration. Now, I already talked about the 1.5 power scope that's on top of it, but on top of that, molded into the aluminum housing are crude, very elementary V-notch sights, something of what you would compare to handgun sights. 
I have had several of these rifles in my life. I had one of the uh, imported black rifles with the 16 inch barrel. Uh, this is a 20 inch barrel version, obviously, but I've never really had much luck with these sights being on target at anything much past, you know, 50 yards or something. So that's one thing that's really kind of interesting about this as a military service rifle is the fact that if you get these, uh, get this thing clogged up with mud and the lenses aren't flush with the rear of the housing, you actually have to reach inside there to clean them. Your rifle's basically useless to you if you have that thing packed with mud. You might be able to stick a finger in there and clean it out, but I think that's why they, they opted to put those rudimentary iron sights on top that are not adjustable. The, the rifle also carried on a tradition that was adopted by the M1681 here in the United States, and that was the inclusion of a forward assist. And that's what this little button is on the back of the charging handle. When you push it down and forward, it will engage with a, a little nub on the end of the op rod here, which we'll show you when we field strip the rifle, and it would allow you to force the bolt to go home. It also made use of a feature that uh, many would question the utility of in an actual infantry rifle because most people don't want grunts swapping out barrels in the field. But if you're using this in its LMG configuration, which there is a version of that, we actually did a video with an LMG barrel in my Black Aug previously here on the channel, but you can quickly change the barrel. If you want to do that, you would pull the bolt to the rear. There's a little nub right by the thumb. I'll get a picture of it for you guys. And you just basically push that little nub and draw your barrel out. Despite the fact that it has a quick detach barrel system, it's still an incredibly accurate rifle. It's probably one of the most accurate bull pups on the market. Sadly, it has one of the worst military triggers uh, ever deployed in any major military because the original trigger on these things was pretty atrocious. Now, aftermarket companies have stepped up and offered parts that you can put into your existing semi-automatic Styrog to, uh, to improve that trigger pull considerably. Another thing that you'll find that it has just a simple cross-block safety, and this is not a fire control unit outside of safe and fire. You can clearly see on the back side, there's a red dot for fire, and then on the opposite side, there's a white dot indicating safe but this was a select fire rifle. This rifle was capable of both semi-automatic and fully automatic fire, and that was accomplished by how far back you pull the trigger. Pull it back to its first stage, it'll fire a single shot, pin that trigger to the rear, and it's gonna dump its magazine. And it is something to get used to. I fired these on fully automatic before, and it is um, interesting to say the least in how that trigger operates. The rifles were designed to work with the proprietary magazine. Now, later versions would make use of NATO Stenag magazines, standard AR-15 M16 mags, but this is the traditional Steyr AUG mag. It's all polymer, has ribbing on the sides to increase the durability. It's actually a really good magazine. When you load it, it's very smooth on the inside. It, it feels as if it's uh, self-lubricating, if you will, and they're really good magazines. To load the rifle, you insert the magazine between the butt stock and the pistol grip. And then you would take your charging handle, which is located right here. And the sling swivels in kind of an awkward position too, because it gets in the way of the charging handle. But then you would just pull that to the rear and let it go. You do have the option of pulling the bolt back and rotating it over into this notch, and that would lock the bolt open manually. Then to charge it, insert a magazine, slap it down, do the HK slap, and the weapon would be loaded. The gas pistons right here has two settings, normal and adverse. And when you change the barrel, you change the gas piston as well. And of course, the very distinctive vertical folding front grip allows you to shoot the rifle like this, which would aid in the controllability on fully automatic. But if you want to fire from the prone position or from a barricaded position, you can fold that grip forward and it becomes a rest of sorts. All right, let's do a little bit of shooting with the Steyr AUG. We do have some 55 grain American Eagle. This is from our friends over at Federal. They supply the ammunition to the channel for free. We'd like to thank them for doing that. All right, remember, this is safe. Push it over fire. When you are a right-handed shooter, when you have your finger off the trigger, you'll feel that square brick. And it's, it's kind of abrasive. Some people say it's too abrasive, but you'll know it's on safe. Just push it over with your finger to fire. And then you're gonna find that's a very pleasant shooting rifle. Let's go ahead and try our 250-yard camouflaged man 
who today with the lighting conditions is a little bit hard to see. And I connected with him. Didn't that time. There we go. Uh-oh, click no bang. And I wonder where that one went. There she is. Let's see what happened there. See if my AUG's having mechanical problems. There's a light primer strike. Wasn't a uh, solid hit. All right, and it locks open the last shot fired. To remove the magazine, I'm gonna go ahead and put the weapon on safe. You have a button right here. You push that button, that will release the magazine. Typically you would do it in this fashion. You'd beer can the magazine and push up with your thumb and strip the magazine out. A very interesting rifle. Now, bullpups present a problem for militaries that like to do drill like we do here in the United States. Imagine trying to do a parade rest with a bullpup being six foot four. Not something that's going to be easily accomplished. But aside from that, bullpups definitely have value. Again, we have a 20 inch barreled rifle here. Compare this to the M16A2, and this rifle is completely considerably shorter. It's going to be handier in vehicle operations, it's going to be handier in CQB and it still has a 20 inch barrel. So I think that's what's been the allure to many of the militaries that have adopted bullpups. The French have done it, the Austrians have done it, the Australians have done it, and other countries have done it as well. So yeah, there's a lot to be said for the design and the shortcomings are few in my opinion. The G36 was adopted by Germany, I think in the opening of the video I said 1997. I know that the development took place between 1990 and 1994, 95. And if I'm not mistaken, I think the standard infantry rifle like you see here was adopted sometime in 1996. The K version would have been adopted in 97. And I think the C version right around 2000, 2001. So this would be an example of the standard 18.9 inch barreled infantry rifle. So it's just shy of a 20 inch barrel on this bad boy. Now this rifle does feature a side folding stock. The stock will clasp over the ejection port buffer here and just kind of lift it up and it'll kind of lock itself into place. This rifle would have replaced the G3, which was a 308 roller lock version of uh, the Spanish Setme rifle that the Germans had used throughout most of the Cold War. This rifle obviously is a post-Cold War rifle given its adoption date. But the Germans were looking at doing something a little bit different as they always are. The, Germans are actually quite innovative when it comes to small arms. They innovated a lot of stuff during World War II that continues on in, in service today and all over the place in different countries and different rifles and things like that. So they're, they're truly innovative. Some could argue that they really made the assault rifle popular, even though the Germans didn't really come up with the first assault rifle. Many people would say it was the Fedorov that was the first rifle, and that would have been in Russia, which predates the STG-44. But in terms of broad military use, the Germans fielded the STG-44 and uh, in fairly large numbers. And you'll still see them being found in places like Syria today. So the Germans wanted to come up with a lightweight infantry rifle. Now, when Eugene Stoner was looking at a lightweight rifle, he was looking at using polymers for handguards and butt stocks, but he turned to aluminum for manufacturing the upper and lower receivers. And in those days, 
That was considered cheap and weird because Americans wanted wood and steel. They didn't want aluminum and plastic. So that changed. Now today, the M16 is kind of the gold standard, but the Germans wanted to take it the next evolutionary step they could using polymers, which is even lighter in most cases than aluminum. So the G36, like the Steyr AUG, makes extensive use of polymers, just like the AUG that predates it. Even components within the fire control group are polymer, things like the hammer. The only place that they use metal is where it's absolutely necessary because there isn't a polymer alternative currently available. The barrel, the bolt and carrier, the trunnion, uh, the springs and the trigger components. But other than that, they used polymer everywhere they could. Most of the receivers polymer, the stocks all polymer, the handguards polymer. I mean, it's, it's really the conventional rifle version of the Steyr AUG, and I would imagine the Germans drew some inspira inspiration from the AUG's success. So this rifle does have uh, ambi controls right out of the gate. Now the ejection port is on the right-hand side of the rifle. That can't be changed, but due to the ejection port buffer, it's not a concern for a left-handed user. You'll find that the fire controls are present on both sides. And even though this one's marked fully automatic, it's only semi-automatic. This is a, a real G36 receiver that was cut and destroyed per ATF regulations, then rebuilt by Tommy Built. Now, both the Steyr AUG and the G36 are available now on the U.S. market. Tommy Built manufactures the T36, and it's pretty much a straight-up G36. He's cloned it darn near perfectly. So both rifles that you see here today in some form or another are actually currently available on the U.S. market. You also have uh, the use of an optic. Now, the first optic that would have been used by the G36 would have had, you know, a, a magnified optic of 1.5 power like you see here. And on top of that, it would have had a red dot sight. And in my opinion, that's rather clunky. I had one years ago on an SL late in the 90s, but uh, this is the optic that I prefer. And later versions of this would have 1913 rails on the top and stuff like that. So the G36, like the AUG, has evolved over the years in military service. But this is just a simple uh, 1.5 power magnified optic that has a ranging element in it, similar to what the Russians would use on one side of the reticle, and then you have simple holdovers. And honestly, the, the optics rather poor on this thing, um, and, and not that it's st spectacular on the AUG, but it's very awkward and kind of fishbowly when you look through it. It's just not a very good optic. And just like the Steyr AUG, you have the ocular side lens that's recessed in this cup, but on the objective side, which is inside the carrying handle, it's a little bit more flush, so it'd be more easy to wipe crud away from it. Just like the Steyr AUG, on top of this carrying handle, you'll see rudimentary pistol-type sights, a V-notch in the rear and a blade. It's molded into the polymer of the carrying handle. And again, these sights are nowhere near being on, just like the Steyr AUG. But you have a flapper-type magazine release, so that's ambi. The charging handle can be pulled to either side which makes it ambi. If you want a forward assist, pull the charging handle out, push it in from either side, and you have a forward assist. Pull it out, and it goes back to the center. Now, the bolt handle does reciprocate on this. When it fires on the Steyr AUG, it does not reciprocate, but it is protected inside this carrying handle of the rifle. It's really unique. The optics back here, and it looks through an opening cut in the, the carrying handle right there. So I think this is a good looking rifle. Uh, the, the polymer on it, for whatever reason, feels more cheap to me than it does on the Steyr AUG, but that doesn't detract from the durability of the rifle. The Germans have put it uh, to good use. Now, there's been various problems that have been reported with the gun melting under sustained fire and things like that, but let's face it, this gun was designed to be an infantry rifle, not a squad automatic weapon. And if you use it as a squad automatic weapon and just do mag dump after mag dump after mag dump, you're going to have problems with this rifle, but that's true of many rifles in the field. So I think that the G36 has gotten a little bit of a bad rap uh, because of those, those reports. And I don't know what the final judgment was, but I do know that the Germans are moving away from the G36 and looking for a different rifle to replace it. So let's say it was in service from 96 to 2020, and they're looking to replace it. It has a fairly short military service life as a primary issued infantry weapon, although it still is the primary weapon, I believe, of the German military. This rifle uses a short stroke gas piston. The AUG has a uh, a short stroke, actually, I believe it's, yeah, it's a short stroke gas pistol on the AUG too. It's on the, the right-hand side of the gun. And so we'll, when we take the gun apart, you'll be able to see uh, the gas components 
on it. You do notice that there is a bayonet lug here and just a simple HK style bird cage on the end. Now I've done a full video on this rifle. If you'd like to have more information about it, I would ask you to go check out that, uh, that video. Now, one thing that's interesting is that when you pull the bolt to the rear, there's no facility to lock the bolt open easily. You have to stick your finger inside the trigger guard and it's not something that's easily done, especially with a, a gloved hand, but you can manually lock it open where the Steyr Aug, you'd pull it to the rear and rotate it up. This, you pull it to the rear and there's this little tiny button that it's kind of awkward to get to, but you can push up on it and that will lock the bolt to the rear. To release it, you have to pull the bolt back and release it. There isn't a downward button like you'd find on an ACR or something like that to release the bolt. Insert the magazine, polymer magazines, just like the Steyr Aug, these can be locked together. I'll show you what that looks like. Insert the magazine, have that flapper AK style release, but it's not a rock and lock. You insert it straight into the mag well, pull the bolt to the rear and let it go. Don't ride it like I accidentally did just then. And let's do a little bit of shooting with the G36 here. The optic on this, I, I would say is slightly worse than what's on the Steyr Aug. Walk her out to 250 here. That camouflage job that we did on that challenge target's really working today. In this light, it's very difficult to make out. Despite being difficult to make out, it's easy to score hits with the, uh, the G36 optic. The trigger pull on the G36 is heavy. It's heavier than the Steyr Aug, but uh, it's still easy to score hits with it. didn't drop a single shot. So it's a very shootable rifle. The recoil impulse on this thing, and I fired these in fully automatic, is um, it's, it's more pronounced than the M16. I would say that when you fire these on fully automatic, they tend to rock around quite a bit. And I think that's more of a function of the gas system that's used. And perhaps maybe the gun's just a little bit over gassed on purpose, but it does not compare to the M16 very well. I still think the M16 is a superior infantry rifle in the same configuration. If you were to take a 20 inch barreled M16 A2 and shoot it next to this, I think everybody would agree that that AR-15 M16 uh, has a much more muted recoil impulse that pushes straight back into the shoulder where this rifle has a tendency to rock under recoil. But overall, it's a very well-made gun. Uh, you would expect that from the Germans. And yeah, very, very cool. Let's take the Steyr Aug apart here really quick for you guys. First, I have the bolt locked to the rear on an empty magazine. I'm gonna drop the magazine out. Again, you just kind of beer can the magazine, hit the release and pull down. Now I'm gonna let that bolt go home. Now, unlike the G36 where you have a manual hold button somewhere on the receiver, with this, once the bolt goes home, you either can lock it open on an empty magazine or rotate it back into that recess right there which holds the bolt open. Pull it down and it goes home. On the rear of the AUG, you have a sling swivel. And the sling swivel is actually a takedown pin as well. There's a little area right here that you can see looks different than the rest of the butt pad. That's because there's a little button there that's part of the trigger group on the inside. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push in on that button, push that pin across. But I'm just gonna pull it all the way out because with my gloves on, I couldn't feel the detent. Now your butt pad will come off and you can see the hole where the, the pin went through that holds the butt, plaid, butt pad in place. The button that you're pushing on is this right here, which also holds that pin in place. Grab that and pull your trigger group out. Now look on the inside. Again, polymer hammer, polymer components throughout with the only metal components being pins that go through. 
and springs and other small components. But the majority of the trigger group, including its housing, is all polymer and dirt. All right. <laughs> your sling is your actual uh, retaining device for your pen. All right, so now we're going to take the receiver off of the stock. There's a big blocky pin right here. <laughs> I was pointing at the, the safety lever. All right, so you're going to push from this side across. Hold that down a little bit, that being the receiver. Push down on a little bit. It'll make it a little bit easier. Then pull this pin across until it stops. It is captive. At that point, the receiver will come off the polymer stock. This is your bolt and carrier. Here's your firing pin. You'll notice this one does not have a roller on it. This is an earlier design. They would evolve this design as well as time went on. On the end, this is your gas piston on this side of the device. And here is where the Ford Assist grabs a hold of this rod and will push forward when you depress the button on the, for on the uh, charging handle. On this side of the receiver, we have the barrel, which you got to have the charging handle slightly to the rear to release it. And there's our gas system with its short stroke piston that pops out and taps on this side of the op rod, like that. And your receiver, very easy to clean. Let's take the G36 apart. I'm gonna to try to do this very quickly for you guys because again, we've covered this in a previous video. But the rifle's fairly easy to maintain in the field. I'm gonna go ahead and drop the magazine out. I have the bolt locked to the rear. I can make sure that the chamber is empty. I'm gonna go ahead and let that bolt go home. The Germans, for whatever reason, are averse to captive pins. They like for pins to come all the way out. And fortunately, they have little facilities in the stock to keep your pin, you know, where you can find it so you don't lose it. So I'm gonna take this rear pin out here. I'm gonna take the pin out by the magazine well there. I'm gonna put those in the stock so I don't lose them. Now to take the mag well off, I'm gonna pull forward on the flapper release and just kind of pull the mag well out like that. Now there are different mag wells available for this. Just simply by changing this one component, the G36 will use a standard NATO Stenag magazine, which is what the AR-15 M16 uses. Now I can take the trigger group out. Now take a look inside here, guys. The selector lever, the hammer, all these are polymer. You'll notice that there's steel inserts where necessary. And of course the pins are metallic, but they've made use of polymers extensively as they possibly can, including the trigger itself. To take the bolt out, I'm gonna rotate the folding stock to one side. And with the pin removed, now I can just pull down and take out the recoil spring and guide rod, and then just hold the muzzle end up and the bolt and carrier will come out. So when comparing the Styrog to the full-size G36, you're gonna notice that the G36 has about a 19 inch barrel, the AUG has a full 20 inch barrel, and you can see the benefit of the bolt pup. Both of them are currently in their firing configuration. You may fold, the stock on the G36, but this would not be considered a firing configuration. This is a storage configuration. And then they're roughly the same size. Actually, the G36 is a little bit shorter with its stock folded. But this is not a practical way to use the G36 when fighting with it. So the length advantage definitely goes to the Styrog. Both Jason and I have shot both of these rifles, and the G36 is lightweight, make no mistake about it. For you know a 19 inch barreled rifle, this thing is extremely lightweight. And I would say that this thing has more polymer in its construction than even the Styrog. Now, while they both have polymer trigger groups in them, the Styrog still has a aluminum receiver up here, which your optic is mounted to. And all that is aluminum, where on the G36, the receiver is mostly polymer with some steel reinforcements with the trunnion up front, with the carrying handle where the sight's mounted and everything else is polymer, and it just feels almost toyish, right? Where the AUG to me and to Jason feels more robust. Now that's subjective, that doesn't mean that one is truly more durable than the other, 
but it's also noteworthy that the Steyr AUG continues on in military service today, and the primary user of the G36 is looking to replace it after just having adopted it in the mid-1990s. And this has been in service since 77, and the military is using it, plan to keep using it. So that says something, I think, about the rifles. I will also say that when shooting the AUG, because most of the weight is back here, it is very easy to keep on target in the standing position. It's easy for the operator to be able to use the rifle effectively and still have their left hand free to grab something and push a door open, do whatever. It's not as cumbersome or awkward, but that's one of the benefits uh, inherent to pretty much every bullpup out there that's being used by any military. With the G36, most there's a lot of weight out front because most of the metal is in the barrel and the gun feels nose heavy and it's just not as easy because of its light weight and the, the most of the noticeable weight being out front, it just doesn't balance well and it's harder to shoot from the standing position than the Styrog, in my opinion and in Jason's opinion. Tough choice. Jason and I mold this over quite a, bit, quite a bit. With most of the other rifles we're gonna compare, I have a definite favorite. Here, it's a little bit more convoluted, but I'm gonna go with the Styrog, and Jason agrees with me. I think the Styrog is the superior of the two rifles. I look forward to seeing what your comments are down below. Guys, if you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, the best way to do that is to become a Patreon supporter. There's a link down below. Click that link and consider joining our Patreon family. Also, in the video viewer that you're watching right now, either on a mobile device or on a desktop, there's a little join button. Click that join button if you'd be so kind and check out what some of the perks are and consider becoming part of our YouTube membership family here on YouTube. And last but not least, please swing by and check out coppercustom.com. Guys, thanks for 12 years of support. We'll talk to you soon. Got the flame suit on. We'll see you guys soon.